with John your boy Ross back at it again with another video so I'm gonna check out 10 wrestlers who were almost killed by fans this is a interesting one uh, we recently seen uh, a fan attack uh, Seth Rollins and I think the guy has some type of mental uh, mental issues I know he came out recently talking about he did it for General Roman he basically pulled the Rikishi move like I did it I did it for you, Rocky. Did it for Roman or something like that. And apparently got catfished by a fake Seth Rollins. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that just just really, really weird. Doesn't really add up. I think the dude, he may have some mental issues. Just the way he was describing things. So I hope he does get help. Because uh, you can't be out here attacking fans. It's very dangerous. And apparently, um, fans almost killed some wrestlers. I don't know if it was... You know, I don't know how that goes about, but we're going to check this out. Uh, appreciate all the love and support. Road to 7K, and let's see what this video is all about. Let's talk about... Let's talk about wrestling fans. Now, there are a lot of easy jokes you can make about wrestling fans, and I'm not going to make any of those, and I'm trusting Editor Rich to not make any using mean images of what people assume all wrestling fans are like. I'm trusting you on this one, Rich. Don't let me down. But one thing that I do feel comfortable saying about wrestling fans is they can get a bit intense. After yes. all, you won't find anyone who hates wrestling more than a wrestling fan. However, sometimes that intense love-hate relationship with the pro wrestling biz can lead fans to take things too far. Wrestlers mm -hmm. pride themselves on being able to blur fiction and reality reality to such an extent it provokes genuine outrage in their audience however some have been so good at it they managed to provoke something else something almost deadly like yeah. Seth Rollins did on this week's Raw. Mm -hmm. Hey at least that fan has a better spear than Edge. Content warning we will be describing violent attacks in this list. We'll try not to show anything graphic on screen but if you don't like that sort of thing this might not be the list for you. I'm Adam Haling from Parts Fun Known and here are 10 wrestlers who were almost killed by fans and if you don't want to kill our channel as fans, like and subscribe, <laughs> or we'll kill you. Number 10, Bobby Heenan. No one knows how to annoy wrestling fans like the weasel. Cocky, charismatic, blonde. Not sure why I like Bobby Heenan so much, but boy do I. While most WWE Legendary. fans might remember Heenan as more of a comedy heel, dressing up in ladies' clothing to sneak into the first ever episode of Raw, getting slapped around by the Red Rooster. Prior to his career in the big dub, his healing was a little bit more serious. In one case, a shade too serious. On January 27th, 1975, Bobby Heenan and Nick Bockwinkle were performing for Vern Gagne's AWA at the Chicago International Amphitheater. Bockwinkle was wrestling the beloved Gagne himself for the big belt, slammed him, pinned him, and picked up the win after Heenan interfered to remove Gagne's foot that was in the ropes. This flagrant disregarding of the rules pissed off a fan so much he stood up and fired a gun multiple times at the ring. Thankfully, Heenan and Bockwinkle were able to escape unscathed. Oh, Number nine. Wow. Holy shit. That's when you're taking it a little bit too far. Oh, but granted, back then, most people kind of believed that wrestling was real. Back then, a lot of people believed it. Hell, I grew up <laughs> in an attitude era believing that shit was real until you find out it's predetermined. So it was different back then. He, oh my God. Sabu. The original extremist Sabu prides himself on being homicidal, suicidal, and yep. genocidal, and would like to politely request that fans not commit gimmick infringement by becoming homicidal themselves. Also, probably not suicidal. Also, definitely not genocidal. Anyway, in the 90s, while he was wrestling in Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, you know, that promotion with all the death matches and exploding rings that AEW didn't exactly pay love and tribute to, Sabu was told by FMW head honcho at Sushi Anita not to take his match outside of the ring due to checks notes. Yakuza members sitting at ringside holy oh. shit for those who've never played a yakuza video game they're bad dudes with attitudes sabu did not listen and dove into the crowd anyway leading to a riot breaking out and members of the gang repeatedly trying to break a chair over sabu's head you oh. naughty little gang boys. Number eight, Whoa. Ole Anderson. Holy Ole Anderson shit. might not be a household name to most modern wrestling fans, which would be a shame as he's one of the founding members of only the four f***ing horsemen, the original gang of hateful pricks. As such, it should probably not come as a surprise that the man wants to provoke wrestling fans to actual factual IRL violence. After tag match with Kayfay brother Gene against Tim Woods and Dino Bravo, he was stabbed by a 79-year-old fan. Holy shit. 
Grandpa's what? had a few too many Werther's Originals and has gone sugar mental. The Andersons had failed to win the NWA World Tag Team titles from Woods and Bravo and on their way backstage, an elderly man stabbed Oli in the arm and chest with a hawkbill knife. Oli was left in serious condition, needing a four hour operation to repair the tendons in his arm and close the wound in his chest. Jeez. Nice to know wrestling fans don't get any less crazy and weird with age. Number seven, Damn. Killer Kowalski, known to most WWE fans as the- These are some boys was wild back then. Jeez. God damn. Man who trained Triple H and the man who definitely did not train mass transit, Killer Kowalski was a legend of the business with a fantastic chin and terrifying eyes, the kind of violent lunatic that creates violent lunacy in others. In one of the most comprehensively violent wrestling stories we've relayed on the channel, Kowalski was wrestling Yukon Eric in Canada in the 50s when Kowalski botched a knee drop and legit severed part of Eric's cauliflower ear. Oh, sweet oh. Jesus. And the story doesn't even end there. Yukon Eric was hospitalized with the injury. It actually ended up being the reason Kowalski got the killer nickname. Eric didn't hold a grudge for the botch, but a fan wasn't quite as forgiving. After the incident, a woman walked up behind Kowalski and said, I'm glad you didn't get hurt before stabbing him in the back. Seemingly wanting to do the deal herself, oh. apparently. Number six, Black Jack no. Mulligan. If it hasn't become clear by These now. These are really intense. This, what we saw with Seth Rollins and, 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 and that crazed fan, I mean, that was, that was, you know, a little shocking. I ain't going to lie to you. That spear was on point. But, you know, still, you know, kind of like, whoa, that was, you know, kind of wild. This is taking it to all this over here attempted murder type stuff for real. Now, pretty much all these stories come from quotes, the good old days of professional wrestling, mm -hmm. back when kayfabe existed. And according to The Undertaker, men were men, scary, violent men. Turns out that wrestling fans, emboldened by a heightened sense of reality in their grappling, were also way more terrifying, as yeah. evidenced by this horror movie level of planning. Black Jack Mulligan, the father of IRS and the grandfather of Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas, wow. was on the way to the ring to wrestle Pedro. Morales in Boston in the 70s when he was stabbed in the leg by a fan with a knife coated in pig fat. The wound itself was bad, requiring a hundred stitches, but the tainted blade caused an infection that could have killed the patriarch of the Wyndham Whoa! Wrestling family. Jesus. Jesus wept. Jesus H. Christ wept. Number five, Roddy Piper. Back in the golden era of wrestling, Roddy Piper wild. came to infuriate wrestling fans and chew bubblegum, and he's all out of bubblegum, and also it was your bubblegum, and he stole it. Piper was such such an effective villain that the main event of the first ever WrestleMania was built around getting even with the saucy Scott. However, three years earlier in 1982, a fan tried to do something that Mr. T never managed in his career, put an end to Hot Rod's antics once and for all. In Raleigh, North Carolina, a fan stabbed Piper in the chest. It was said the knife came within an inch of Piper's heart. Despite that- Jeez, bro, what is going on? God. Bro, boys really took this wrestling stuff seriously. Like, not even joking. Boys was really not playing. And rest in peace uh, to Roddy Piper as well. Jeez. Hot Rod gave chase to his attacker until police caught up and detained the man at gunpoint, with the rowdy one saying it was the closest he'd ever come to seeing a man get shot. Number four, Brian Nobbs. Between rubbing people's faces into their armpits and almost shoot murdering Ken Shamrock in a hotel room that one time, it's fair to say that the Nasty Boys were fairly rotten dudes. And I'm far from the only person who thinks so. After a show in Peoria, Illinois in 1992, the Nasty Boys evidently made an impression on the fans in attendance. The tag team of Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sags were driving back to their hotel hotel with IRS in the car when they were followed by a group of men in another car. The car swerved over five lanes of traffic to cut off the nasty boys and force them into stopping. When Brian Nobbs got out of the car to check for any damage, one of the men in the other car, a 20-year-old named David Miller, rushed up to him and stabbed Nobbs in the chest, who was immediately rushed to hospital but thankfully survived. While he was fortunate the attack wasn't more serious, Nobbs had to be pulled from action for three weeks, meaning he had to be replaced in the 92 Royal Rumble pay-per-view by Haku. Number three, Dennis Condry and Jim Cornette. Can't I can't imagine really any wrestling fans writers. wanted to hurt Jim Cornette. He's such a rare Kentucky Fried Sunshine. But yes, Jim Cornette famously pines for the days when wrestling was real, fans were dumber, and the mark of true toughness and dignity was screaming at fast food waitresses. Although thinking about it, Corny probably doesn't pine for this specific day. Following a show in Louisiana, a redneck fan tried to talk tough to Dennis Condry of the Midnight Express. Condry, heel that he was, told the fan to go f himself, which is when <laughs> things turned 
turned up a notch. The fan threw an unopened beer can at him. Thankfully, Condry ducked that. Then probably unthankfully took the fan to the ground and kicked him in the face. Even more unthankfully, that fan had a group of 12 friends with him and they were ready to gang up and kill Condry and Jim Cornette, who found himself caught in the fray. When the Rock and Roll Express turned on their headlights and checks notes, drove into the crowd from the other end of the parking lot. The, the good old days what? of vehicular... <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What type of... This is wrestling before my time. God damn it, these motherfuckers. Bro. The mayhem. Number two, the Freebirds. When you talk about iconic wow. factions whose bread and I'm butter were starting riots right wherever right they went, you have to mention the fabulous up. Freebirds. While they may sound like a DreamWorks animated movie, they were actually a trio of evil bastards who made a name for themselves with dastardly acts like smashing Kerry Von Erich's head in a steel cage door or, and this is relevant to this story, blinding the junkyard dog with hair removal cream. Yes, indeed. In Mid-South Wrestling, Michael Hayes kayfabe blinded JYD, who was such a hero to the fans that one of them decided to take retro Distribution into his own hands. One night in New Orleans, the Freebirds were wrestling a tag match with JYD sitting at ringside in a cane and sunglasses. A fan jumped the rail and told JYD, don't worry, I got him, for aiming a pistol at the Freebirds. Junkyard Dog didn't know whether or not to break kayfabe and reveal actually he could see, but thankfully, a cop tackled the man, allowing both the Freebirds and kayfabe to live another day. Uh, so see, this is what I'm saying. Back then, K kayfabe was still intact. Like, they did not break character at all. They didn't. So people believe that these people were how they acted at the ring. That's just what it was. Now it's damn near, it's pretty much dead. You have social media, so you can check shit. But back then, no. So these fans believe these people that was in these situations were like legitimately hurt or legitimately good or bad. Dude said, don't worry, bro. I got them. So he's like, he has to, he's over here trying to, he has to then just keep it up. He has to keep that persona like, damn, I'm really hurt. Like, bro, that's, oh my God. God, that's insane. Day. And number one, Harley Race. Okay, so this one might not have involved an actual wrestling fan, but gosh, it's interesting, so leave me alone, you big internet pillox. Widely renowned as one of the toughest gentlemen to ever lace up a pair of boots, Harley Race was no stranger to getting into tussles with members of the public. The one-time king of the ring was having dinner in a Minneapolis restaurant in 1965, where he saw a man slap a woman during a heated argument. 22-year-old Race, going under the name Handsome Harley Race at the time, walked up and knocked that man out with one punch. Damn. And then left the restaurant. However, outside the establishment, the fallen man's friend ran up to Race and stabbed him in the back with a knife he'd taken from the bar. Race was rushed to hospital, but thankfully the wound ended up being not too serious. Ooh. So not technically a fan attack per se, but hey, the attackers were horrible bellens who got hurt feelings and in their macho sensitivity escalated things to a ludicrous degree. So it's not inconceivable that they were wrestling fans. And that's our list. What did you, the wrestling Bro, fans, I, think of this, it? Did you, did you, please don't, please don't kill. Th this was... Bruh, all these, all these instances, I usually ask which one's the most shocking, all of them, every single one of them in this entire video. I'm not thinking he's really talking about, get, you know, these wrestlers potentially getting killed. No, Th this is really a real thing. Boys really back in the day, before they knew the shit wasn't real like that, they weren't playing. How many times did he mention someone getting stabbed in this video? I don't think... I've never been stabbed, and I pray to God I never do get stabbed. But I know it's 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 not something enjoyable, especially getting stabbed in your chest. Jesus Christ, bro! I this whole video is shocking, man. Comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys just as shocked as I am? Because I am, bro. I can't pick a single instance from this video that didn't shock me. All of them did because motherfuckers was really trying to kill people back then he's when you believe wrestling is real this is what happens no bro it's not like that dude trying to shoot somebody with a piss don't worry bro i got him for you wait whoa whoa i can see <laughs> jesus but i appreciate all the love and support road to <laughs> 70k appreciate y'all kicking it with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace